At the time of Singapore's independence in 1965, the population was growing rapidly, mostly through births and some in migration. Since then, the number of babies born annually has fallen dramatically, and the total fertility rate is now well below the level required for population replacement. Today, the local population is growing very slowly, and in-migration is the main driver of population growth. In-migration has added to Singapore's total population with many foreigners taking up permanent residency, depicted here by green people icons turning blue, or PRs becoming citizens, indicated by the blue people icons turning red. Today, Singapore citizens and PRs known collectively as the resident population, make up about three-quarters of the total population, with foreigners making up the remaining quarter. Since 1980, the foreign population, the Greens, have increased slightly more than tenfold, from almost 132,000 to almost 1.4 million today. Some of these foreigners have taken up permanent residency, and some permanent residents have also taken up citizenship here. At today's fertility rate, about 1.2 births per woman over her lifetime, Singapore's resident population will start to decline from 2020 onwards if we do not add new citizens and PRs. Singapore's population will also age rapidly. The proportion aged 65 and older will increase rapidly while the proportions of the young will decline. We show this with red people icons, Singaporeans turning grey over time. The potential support ratio, the number of working persons to support a single older person aged 65 and above, would drop sharply. This means that there will be less than two people of working age for every retiree by 2050, as compared with well over seven now. The resident labour force would decline from 2 million in 2010 to 1.4 million by 2050 if there is no conversion of foreigners to the resident population. From 2015, if fertility remains low and if there is no in-migration, new additions to the resident population, progressively more and more people will be leaving the workforce than will be entering it. Even if Singapore can somehow raise the fertility rate from 1.24 to 1.85, the ageing and shrinking of the resident population will continue, but at a slower rate. The addition of new citizens and PRs at a rate of 30,000 per year can help slow down the population's decline and ageing. The potential support ratio would drop a little less dramatically from 7.7 7 in 2010 to 2.7 by 2050. An ageing population can strain ties between the generations, but if we accept that some level of in-migration is required to generate sufficient economic prosperity to pay for the needs of an ageing population, what is the appropriate level of foreigner intake for Singapore? Next, we offer three different scenarios of foreigner intake one where one in four persons in Singapore is a non-resident foreigner, another where only one in five is a foreigner, and a third where one in three or 33% of the population is a foreigner. This scenario mirrors the current ratio of foreigners and residents in Singapore. Singapore's population would grow from just over 5 million to 6.5 million people by 2050. The population density would increase to 9,159 per square kilometre. Here, the potential support ratio drops from 10.3 in 2010 to 3.9 by 2050. The ageing index would increase from 55 to 163 elderly for every 100 youth and the labour force would grow from 3.1 million in 2010 to 3.8 million by 2050. But what if the foreigner ratio is reduced? In this scenario, where there is only one foreigner among every five persons here, the population would grow more slowly whilst the workforce would age relatively quickly. 
The population's size would grow to 6.1 million in 2050. Population density would increase to 8,586 per square kilometre. The potential support ratio will drop from 10.3 in 2010 to just 3.6 by 2050, compared with 3.9 in the first scenario. And the ageing index would increase from 55 to 166, whilst the labour force would rise slowly to 3.4 million. This scenario is a more restrictive option than the present situation. This could lead to slower economic growth, the possibility of an intergenerational divide emerging together with a loss of economic vitality, cannot be discounted. Now we move to a scenario where one out of every three persons in Singapore is a foreigner. The population of Singapore would rise to 7.3 million people by 2050. This scenario will result in the highest population density to 10,252 persons per square kilometre in 2050. But the potential support ratio would drop less than the two previous scenarios to 4.4 by 2050. The population in this case would continue to age, but at a slower pace. The ageing index would increase to 159. And while the foreigner share of the workforce would rise, the size of the labour force would also continue to rise. This scenario would be a more liberal immigration policy than what we have now. It will likely lead to higher economic growth, but would also mean greater population density and may increase tensions between locals and foreigners. Singapore's twin demographic challenges of a low TFR and an ageing population will result in fewer working persons supporting each retiree. This may potentially create divisions between the young and old. Are we ready to accept the implications of a rapidly ageing population? Will the young be able to bear the fiscal burdens of supporting the needs of the old? In-migration will offset the effects of an ageing and shrinking population, but it can also cause tensions between foreigners and locals. How can we bridge these potential divides? What more can we do to raise the TFR? Answers to these questions will entail making choices and preparing for the future. What are the trade-offs between economic growth, quality of life and social ties?